Welcome to the Property Elite Podcast. I'll be your host, Jen Lehman, Chartered Surveyor and Co-Founder of Property Elite. Stay tuned each week for more on industry hot topics, market updates and new RICS guidance. In this week's podcast, I take a look at the April 22 RICS Insight paper, AVMs, Implications for the Profession and Their Clients. You can download a full copy of the Insight paper from the RICS website. Please find a link from our website blog. So firstly, why was the Insight paper published? You can read about the RICS AVM roadmap published in July 2021 in our previous website blog and podcast. This led to wide-ranging consultation and the publication of the current Insight paper in April 2022. The Insight paper does not provide formal or mandatory guidance. However, it does provide an overview of the current state of AVM use within the industry and the RICS response to this. AVMs are used extensively in the valuation profession, although RICS has not yet issued extensive guidance on their use or application. This includes the due diligence process, risk management, including liability, and regulatory function of RICS. In particular, RICS emphasised that valuers need to become sufficiently skilled, competent and experienced in the use of AVMs and that the use of any AVM requires the human input of a chartered surveyor and registered valuer. The increased use of AVMs is typically client-driven and due to the following factors. Speed. Cost. Scale, particularly for valuations of portfolios, taxation, funds, non-performing loans and securitisation. And consistency, particularly for large-scale valuations, AVMs can help to remove an element of human error if used appropriately. AVMs can also be used as a sense or cross-check for manual valuations. So what type of assets are AVMs being used to value in the current market? AVMs are most effective when used to value assets which are homogenous, i.e. similar, and have an active market. They are often used to value residential properties for secured lending purposes and for social housing portfolios, although with lender caveats where the construction type is non-traditional, for example. In the UK, AVMs are not yet used by lenders in Northern Ireland. There is a desire to extend their use into the Isle of Man and Channel Islands for higher value properties and for buy-to-let properties. The use of AVMs is also limited for blocks of flats given the risk of combustible cladding and requirement for EWS1 forms. The use of AVMs is more challenging for diverse commercial assets, particularly if they are income producing, have unique characteristics or are infrequently traded. However, the use of AVMs is becoming more widespread to forecast market rents, assess market rent on the basis of vacant possession and create new market indices. So why is data quality so important for AVMs? Here we look at the quote garbage in, garbage out. High quality data needs to be inputted in AVMs to provide high quality, reliable outputs, i.e. valuations. This requires data to be recent, available, able to be used in line with data protection and privacy legislation and in an ethical manner, auditable with a clear source and provenance, assured legally and financially if material issues are identified with the data, consistent, collected appropriately, of sufficient scale and range, free of bias and of sufficient sample size, and ideally transacted values, not asking prices, which are less reliable. ESG and sustainability are also two important considerations when inputting data within AVMs, such as an EPC rating or BRIAM certification if available. This sits comfortably with the relevant guidance of the updated 2022 Red Book Global. To find out what type of models AVMs use, such as regression analysis, machine learning and neural networks, you can head to the free resources section of our website and download our relevant research papers. So what are some of the key risks of AVM use? Firstly, bias, including inherent selection bias by the user or end client. Conflicts of interest where professionals both develop and use AVMs. AVM outputs can drive perceptions of value. The input data may not be of sufficient quality to produce consistent, reliable outputs. AVM outputs intended for risk assessment are being relied upon as valuations or misunderstood by the auditing or accounting sector as being equivalent to a manual valuation. 
DRCs are being automatically adjusted using building cost indices, which introduces a very specific risk into the valuation process. Reliance on market indices may not reflect asset-specific characteristics or issues. Insufficient supervision of AVM use by chartered surveyors and registered valuers. AVMs may struggle to deal with market uncertainty or volatility, such as during COVID or Brexit. AVMs can actually drive market volatility rather than reflecting market conditions. Without human input, AVMs could become self-reinforcing rather than being marked to the market. There is also a lack of standardization in AVM models, a lack of consumer awareness about the adoption of use and of AVMs. There's a clear impact on the professional indemnity insurance market and a lack of input surveyors and valuers into the development of AVMs. RICS have confirmed that they will continue to reflect the use of AVMs within the Red Book Global, with a potential new guidance note being published to supplement this. RICS also plan to review the APC competencies and pathways in relation to the increased use of technology and data, as well as enhancing qualified members' skills and competence in this area. This may include a new property data scientist pathway for the APC, or looking at the existing research pathway. RICS also emphasised the role in AVM adoption and use of the human in the loop, i.e. a chartered surveyor and registered valuer. This will require collaboration between technology professionals and the surveying industry to create AVMs that are fit for purpose, consistent and reliable. Thanks for listening to the Property Elite podcast this week. Head to our website to check out our full blog, free and paid support resources and services, free consultation for every single RICS APC and ASOC RICS candidate and also ask us any questions you have via the website chat blog. See you next week.